Okay, so here is our simple model of the cell cycle. Um, it starts right here when we have a cell that's formed, one of the daughter cells. So it first goes into this G1 phase, and that's G1 for growth. And what it's basically going to do in this one is it's going to get to be a full-size cell. So when they're first formed, they've just split. They're going to be a little bit smaller, so they're going to have to increase in size. And that'll be making a few new organelles, and it starts doing its normal functioning processes. So if it's a muscle cell, this is when it'll act as a muscle cell. If it's going to be a skin cell, this is when it's going to act like a skin cell and do what skin cells do. After the G1 phase, it enters the S phase here, and during the S phase is when it goes through DNA replication. And this is important because before the cell can split, it has to copy its DNA so that both of the daughter cells are going to get their own copy of DNA, and they can then function as a working cell. After the S phase, it goes into the G2 phase, and this is going to be the preparation for mitosis. So it might get a little bit bigger. It's going to start making sure it has enough copies of the organelles so that both cells, both daughter cells, will have a copy of the organelles. And then it leaves the normal working phase, which we call interphase. And this is where the cell spends most of its time. And then it goes into this last part over here, which we call cell division. And cell division is sometimes called the M phase, and that's for mitosis. And we'll go through the steps of mitosis here in just a few minutes. But mitosis is when we divide the nucleus, and then ultimately through cytokinesis when we actually cleave and split the cell into two. So that's a quick overview of our cell cycle. First it goes to the G1 phase, then it goes to the S phase, then it goes to the G2, and then it goes into this M phase here finally. And at the end of the M phase it'll split and it'll form two daughter cells, and each of the daughter cells then starts again here in the G1 phase. So again, just in review, we're going to talk about interphase. Remember, interphase was made up of the G1, the S, and the G2 phase. And during interphase, the cell is going to grow. It's going to make copies of its DNA and other organelles, including the centrioles. And this is when it gets ready to divide, but it's also when the cell is functioning as it's supposed to. Once the cell has got ready for division, it enters in the M phase and it starts mitosis. The first stage of mitosis is prophase here. And what you'll see is a couple different things happening. Um, you'll see that the nuclear membrane here is starting to break apart. All right, so now the nucleus is starting, the membrane's dissolving away, and that'll expose out our chromatids and our chromosomes. And this is our genetic material. So you can see these right here, and what they're basically doing is they're thickening up. They're bundling themselves up and winding themselves tighter and tighter, and that keeps them together. When the cell's in interphase, that DNA material is going to be all spread out and wispy and kind of a tangled knot. But what it'll do when it's time to move and it's time to split the cell is it'll bunch up together. And that makes it a little easier to keep track of where everything is. You'll also notice up here we have our centrioles. And our centrioles play a part in the division of the cell. And they're going to start forming what we call this spindle in between them, these spindle fibers. And that's what will actually pull the chromosomes to the opposite sides of the cell or to their poles. And that takes us through prophase. During metaphase, and it starts with the M, so we're going to work about the middle or the metaphase plate, what we'll notice is that the chromosomes here are lining up in the middle of the cell. And the reason this happens is that just kind of makes it real simple to make sure that both sides get what they need. Okay, And that's the important thing is we want to make sure that when the cell divides, each side of the division results in a daughter cell that's going to actually have all the pieces and parts it needs to be successful. So you can see that the centrioles that started off on one side have migrated to the opposite poles. The spindle fibers have now stretched across the cell, and you can see those coming across this way here. Those are the green lines. And this is metaphase. Remember, metaphase is the middle. All of the chromosomes line up here on the middle. Next up comes anaphase. And in anaphase, we notice the importance of the spindle fibers. They attach to the centromere of the chromosomes, and they're going to pull apart. Notice this once was a nice little X-shaped one in here, and it's centromeres here, and it's going to pull these apart, and we end up with a half one here and a half one there. And that's a complete set. These were once pairs. So by doing this over and over again is how we split the cell's DNA. And notice it's moving to the opposite sides. And we start to see a little bit of a cleavage furrow here where the cell's starting to look like it's going to start pinching in together and start moving. So anaphase is when we start separating and moving the chromosomes to the other sides of the cell or to their poles. 
Now the fourth and final phase of mitosis is what we call telophase. In telophase, we'll notice that the spindle fibers have all disappeared at this point in time. We have centromeres that have located to opposite ends of the cells. Okay, and we're starting to see this reformation of a nuclear membrane. So it's forming a new nucleus. We'll also start to see this DNA start to unravel so that it can be used. And we'll talk about the using of DNA in a couple units. And you'll also notice that this cleavage furrow, this division is starting to get a little bit more pronounced here. And that'll take us to our last and final phase, the M phase. Okay, the last stage is cytokinesis. And cytokinesis is when the cytoplasm splits and we form our two daughter cells. And what you can notice in each of the daughter cells is that the nuclear membrane is completely done and we have our two new nuclei and you can see that the DNA is starting to squiggle out again and this is how it becomes useful. And these cells will now enter into interphase and they'll start growing to become a regular sized cell and doing what they need to do and ultimately they'll get ready to go through the process of mitosis again. So as a quick review of mitosis, we start off here in prophase. And in prophase, remember we had our centromeres and our spindle starting here, the nuclear membranes going away, and our chromosomes are starting to thicken up here a little bit and they're getting ready to be moved. The next stage is metaphase, and that's where they all line up here on the middle, and our spindle fibers start attaching to the centromeres of the chromosomes. During anaphase over here is when we see the separation of the sister chromatids, and they'll start migrating to the poles. They're pulled there along that spindle fiber by the centromeres. Then we enter here into telophase, and in telophase we see the disappearance of the mitotic spindle. You'll also start seeing the nuclear membrane starting to form, and we're starting to form our two different nuclei. You'll also notice that we're starting this whole cytokinesis process, which finishes up over here, and that results in our two cells. And then our daughter cell will then go into interphase, where it'll get ready for the whole process to start all over again. So one more time as a quick review, our new daughter cell is formed and it goes into this G1 phase where it performs its typical activities and it'll grow to be a normal size. Then it goes into the S phase where it'll copy its DNA. Now it can stay in this G1 phase for an extended period of time or it can be a relatively short amount of time, depends on the cell and the lessons will go through that with you. After the S phase, it goes into this G2 where it makes a copy of its organelles and it doubles in size almost. Then it enters into mitosis, okay? So interphase is where it's doing its normal activities, it's copying its DNA, it's copying the organelles, and then it goes into mitosis where we have our prophase first, where the envelope, nuclear envelope will break down and we start forming the spindle fibers. Then we go into metaphase where the spindle fibers line up the chromatids in the middle of the cell. Then we go into anaphase where the sister chromatids are gonna separate at their centromeres and the spindle fibers move these separated chromosomes to opposite sides of the cell. And then we enter into telophase where the nuclear envelope starts to form. So it forms a new nucleus, the chromosomes start spreading out, all of that stuff gets ready. Cytokinesis is also gonna be going on here and we'll break into our two daughter cells and that takes us right back here to the G1 phase. So mitosis is how eukaryotic cells divide. We also have the prokaryotic cells that don't have a nucleus, so there isn't this big process of mitosis going on. Instead, they do a process called binary fission. And binary fission quite simply means is we start off with our cell, and we have our plasma membrane. Remember, they only have the membrane at the very end outside that separates the cell from the world. There's no internal membranes, and their DNA is just floating inside the cytoplasm. Now, the DNA will duplicate itself, and then the cell will divide, and then we have two daughter cells. And these are going to be carbon copies of themselves. And that's why it's done a little bit quicker is because there's not the long process that it goes through to do this. It'll just duplicate the DNA, and then it'll just divide that way. So that's it for our video. As always, the lessons will go into it a little bit more in detail and depth. And hopefully you'll do well on the lessons and we will see you again next time. So let's talk about chromosomes. Now, there's two different kinds of cells that I want you to be familiar with. We have gametes and then we have the somatic cells. Gametes are often referred to as our sex cells and in females, those are the eggs and in males, those are gonna be the sperm. Somatic cells are everything else. Sometimes they're called the body cells. Now, 
remember that when you were formed, you came from an egg and a sperm, and that gave you your complete set of DNA. And if we look at this karyotype down here, you can see that for chromosome one, we have two copies. You got one copy from your mother and one copy from your father. And that's the case with all of these. So in essence, all of your body cells are going to have what we call a diploid condition or 2N. They'll have two copies of each of the chromosomes. Now, if we had two copies in each sperm and two copies in each egg, when they came together, you would have four copies, and that's way too much. So our gametes here are what we call haploids, and they simply have N. They're going to have one of each of these chromosomes is all. So they'll have one or the other. And we'll talk about that process of meiosis and how we get it down from a 2N to a 1N condition. So unlike mitosis, meiosis has two different divisions. So we're going to go through meiosis 1 first. And in meiosis 1, it'll look an awful lot like mitosis. You'll see that during prophase, the chromosomes thicken up. The nucleus is going to dissolve away. And then we're going to get into metaphase. We're going to see a lining up of the chromosomes on the middle plate here. During anaphase, they're going to separate. We'll see that process going on here. And then finally, through telophase and cytokinesis, we form two cells. So let's take a little more detailed look at this process. Okay, so once again, for meiosis, our story starts with interphase. And during interphase, the cell is going to be growing and making copies of its DNA and other organelles, including the centrioles, and everything gets ready for this division process. So this brings us into prophase one. Okay, and during prophase one, we get an interesting thing going on. We call this crossing over. So as our chromosomes are lining up, what you'll notice is, is down here, there's a little bit of crossing over the chromosomes and they can actually switch genetic material. And this process is what separates the DNA from the mother strand and the father strand. This crossing over allows it to become a little bit blended. And that's why you're kind of a mixture of your parents but also you're different from your siblings. It's because of this crossing over process. Now, you'll notice that the nuclear membrane is all gone. We're forming our spindle fibers here, and this is what we see going on during prophase one. In metaphase one, as always, we see that our chromosomes are gonna line up here in the middle of the cell. Remember, M is for middle. We have our spindle fibers here. They're gonna attach to our different chromosomes and we can see that the process is getting ready to divide them up. Now, in anaphase one, you'll see a little bit of a difference. We're not breaking the sister chromatids in half. Instead, what we're doing is we're transferring the whole chromosome to the poles, okay? In mitosis, we would have split these in half and each half would have come there, but here we're gonna ultimately make it one set. So we can start seeing some division here going on. Okay, and the end of meiosis one is with telophase one, and in telophase one, you'll notice that the spindle fibers are all gone here. You'll notice that the nuclear membrane is starting to form, and we've also had cytokinesis, so we've split into two different daughter cells. So you can see we went from one cell to two cells, just like we see in mitosis. Now we enter in meiosis two. Meiosis two is what separates us from mitosis. Remember mitosis was just one division, meiosis is two divisions. So here, our paired chromosomes are gonna start lining up again, right? During metaphase, they'll get on the middle plate. During anaphase, we're gonna separate the sister chromatids here, and then we'll have cytokinesis and telophase going on, and we'll end up with four cells. So let's take a look at these steps a little bit more in detail. So here we see prophase 2. Notice it's in meiosis 2, so now we have the 2 with it. And once again, our centrioles are splitting out. We're starting to form the mitotic spindle. The nuclear membrane is all gone, and we see a thickening of the chromosomes again. Also, take notice that now, instead of having one cell going through the process, we have our two daughter cells going through the process. And because these are the daughter cells and we separated the chromosomes, each of these daughter cells is going to have half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. Now we're in metaphase 2. Remember, M is the middle, so we'll see along the mid plate of the cell or the metaphase plate, we're lining up these chromosomes. And they're getting ready. They're attached to the mitotic spindle, and they're ready to divide. Now here in anaphase 2, 
you'll notice that we've attached to the center mirror and we split the sister chromatids. So now each cell is getting a chromatid instead of a pair. So the chromosomes, we had the homologous pairs where there were two together and we split those pairs up. So we had a chromosome in each daughter cell. Now we're splitting those into the separate chromatids. And that takes us to telophase two where we start forming a new membrane. We notice that we're losing our mitotic spindle. We'll go through cytokinesis. And now what we result in is four haploid cells. So each of these four cells is gonna have half of the DNA. Instead of having a full set, it only has a half set. And that's gonna be important because if I take a half set and a half set and add it together, I get a full set. And that's what we need in our somatic cells. Okay, so here's a real quick summary of meiosis. Remember, meiosis has two different phases, meiosis one and meiosis two. During prophase one, we have our sister chromatids that are gonna shrink up and get ready to go. Our spindle fibers are gonna to attach to the centromeres and we have our crossing over going on at this point. That takes us into metaphase one where we're going to have the tetrads line up randomly in the center of the cell. Then we go to anaphase where the homologous chromosomes are gonna separate and they'll move to opposite ends of the pole. And then we go into telophase one where the nuclei reform and the cytoplasm divide in half. So now we have two daughter cells. Each of the daughter cells has half the genetic material as the original cell. Then we go into prophase two where the spindle fibers are gonna to attach to the sister chromatids. These sister chromatids will line up in the center of the cell and then during anaphase, these sister chromatids separate and they move to the opposite sides. We get four nuclei forming, cytokinesis creates four cells and all of those cells are gonna be in the haploid condition. Okay, so the difference between mitosis and meiosis, mitosis is in body cells, meiosis is gonna be in these gametes or sex cells. Mitosis results in two diploid or two N cells and meiosis results in four haploid or just a single end cell. Okay, so the lessons will go into it in a little more depth so you can understand what's going on. And as always, good luck on the lessons and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, so to begin, let's define what cancer is. Cancer quite simply is a cell that has forgotten how to stop growing. So these cells will just continue to divide and reproduce and make new cells and they grow into this mass we call a tumor. Now there's two kinds of tumors. We have a benign tumor, which is in one place, and then we have the malignant tumors, which is spread. And that process of the cancer cells spreading is what we call metastasis. Okay, so cancer is bad because it just creates a lump of cells that are just gonna keep growing and growing and growing. Okay, so what causes cancer? Well, there's a couple different things that we have to look into. The first one is genetics. Some people are just predisposed to have cancer grow inside of them. Some people just don't. It's just, it's kind of a genetic thing. You may or may not have the genetics for it. There's also the carcinogens, and those are triggers for chemicals that cause cancer. Um, there's environmental factors like sunlight is one. There's also chemicals out there like tobacco from cigarette smokes and then the asbestos we used to use in buildings. And both of those will get into your lungs and it'll cause your lung cells to mutate a little bit and they'll start growing and that's what forms the tumors. Okay, the last thing I want to talk to you about today is skin cancer, and that is just kind of how you would check to make sure that you're not having any. Um, they say to follow the ABCD method. The first is just check for asymmetry, and they'll have pictures in the lessons you can look at, but that's where one half of the spot doesn't really match the other half. So it's asymmetrical. They don't match. Um, it'll have irregular borders, so it'll be kind of ragged or blurred rather than a crisp, clear border. Um, changes in color, especially when the pigmentation is not the same throughout it. So if you start seeing it change colors, that's a pretty good sign that you want to get it looked at. And then changes in the diameter. If it gets really big or really small, you kind of want to get it looked at also. Okay, so that's our real quick talk about cancer. Um, the lessons will go over it into a little more depth for you. Good luck on the lesson, and as always, we'll see you in the next video.